is Bermuda Triangle Exit, a tune by Stefan Grossman that uh, knocked me out when I first heard it. 1978. Came out on a record. I was a huge fan of John Renborn's and anything he was doing. And of Stefan Grossman's. Had quite a few of his albums. They put out a duet album in 1978 called John Renborn and Stefan Grossman. Uh, Stefan, of course, pronounces his name Stefan, but I haven't quite gotten used to that yet. Anyway, um, the, uh, this album came out on Stefan's label, Kicking Mule, in the United States, and on uh, John, or actually a label uh, that Stefan had been with in um, Europe, Sonnet. Now, what was really cool about this, well, aside from the fact that it opened up with the coolest thing I'd ever heard. Let me think about this. called Snap a Little Owl. Someday I may get to a lesson on that. Not only is that so cool, then that's actually Stefan's playing that on the record. And then John comes in with a lead over it. Beautiful duet. One of the, again, coolest things I've ever heard. If you are not familiar with Snap a Little Owl, dig it up. Um, then it follows with this tune, uh, a solo of Grossman's called Bermuda Triangle Exit, as we all know. And uh, there were a couple solos each on this album and then some duets, so you really gotta, gotta get this album. And right on the top front it says Guitar Tab Songbook Available. One of the cool things about getting the English version was the book came with it. And it's pretty trash by now, but because I've had this for, I don't know, 35 years? Is that possible? Yes, I think so. And, um, and it had tablature to all of the tunes. Like right here is the original of Bermuda Triangle Exit. Following Snap a Little Owl, I have since I have not just copied this. I've kind of written it out. Some other really cool tunes. Uh oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stumble through something here and see what happens. One called Wyatt Duck. That was another one I really liked. sit here and sight read this stuff for you. But it was so cool that this tab book came with this, and I'm still really fortunate to have it. Matter of fact, it's going back in the record and never coming out again. Okay, enough history of that particular album. I don't think it's available anymore the way it is, but there are compilation albums that include this tune, the tune Snap a Little Owl and Bermuda Triangle Exit and Looper's Corner and Why a Duck. If those are all on there, get it. Um, there's another really cool Renborn solo which one am I thinking of? Luke's Little Summer and Luck at Sunday. Anyway, okay, this song though, I have, I have shown this to hundreds of students, at least dozens over the years. It's a, it's a you know, medium to advanced finger picking song, especially to get it at the point where it, we want to have some improvising in here. Now I played it fairly straight in the last segment as far as what I have, pretty close to what I have in the tablature. But usually when I play this song, I uh, kind of go off on tangents. I didn't want to do that for that one and, and improvise with the basic chord progression. So one of the most important things, in the, in the first section, we have a little introduction. Then we have the first section, really only four measures. But the important part of the first section, section A, is that we hear this descending bass line. And then an E minor to an A. melody. Landing on an E minor chord, and then an A and a G. So, we'll break that part down. Second section, again a four, little four measure phrase done twice, just following a chord progression. B minor, A, E minor. Kind of a B minor, C, and a little A. A to G to E minor. We also have 
lot of percussive effects in this song where you have to just slam on the strings. Let me try it again. There's a big E in the bass. Sometimes I just hit it, I, sometimes I just strum it like that. song to mess with. I should stop talking about this. We should get to the lesson. Take a look at the tablature. Listen to it. Oh, Stefan, by the way, if you listen to the original, he's capoed at the second fret. He did a lot, it gives you a little different tonality there. Makes some of the, there really aren't too many stretches in this, but makes it a little bit easier on the left hand fingering. Capos in general lower the action on the guitar, which make it a little bit easier to play as well. So, okay, enough rambling about Bermuda Triangle Exit. Let's start breaking down the segments and important things that have to be done to make this song sound good. Well, we'll take the uh, close-up approach for the rest of this lesson, I think, so you can see both hands and a little more description of what's happening. Um, like I mentioned, we have really just three sections and a variation and an intro and an outro. So we'll start with the intro and section A. The intro starts off with a set of three quick triplets ending with harmonics, and then goes into our slide that starts off section A. So for, fingering for this on the right hand, what you want to do is use your thumb for the start of each triplet. So we're at the fifth fret, we're on the G string at the fifth, we need G to A to B, consecutive notes, or uh, notes straight up a scale, thumb one, two on that. I would start with my fourth finger here just to make this stretch easier. This might be the reason Stefan uh, uh, capoed at the second fret for that very, this very first stretch. And then land at the seventh fret with your third finger, and you really you don't want you don't want this to happen. You have to connect these, and to get to make that really work, you have to practice getting through those. And as you hit this open B, getting your thumb to come right in and hit that that D at the seventh fret of the G string and then following it. So one finger at a time with your left hand. Don't put this down and then try to plant this and then try to plant that. Well, this is not too hard to plant. It's the harmonics. But, but with your left hand here, thumb index middle on all three of these. And again, you jump up to the seventh fret and just get that note. Make sure you've connected it to the first three before you worry about the next one. And as you hit the open note, have your hand moving up there, eyes always ahead of your fingers, making sure that you're looking at, at your target. So right now, as soon as I'm playing this, I'm looking at the seventh fret and, and you know, planning on landing right there. I'm not watching my left hand fingers. And now I'm looking at the 12th fret for the harmonics, which you could do with either your third finger or your fourth finger. Whichever one, the important thing about the harmonics there is that, that you're parallel to the fret and right above the 12th fret, not behind it, like this. So make sure that, and then get rid of it as quickly as possible so that they continue to ring. Something like that.